Algebra 1, Lesson 27, we are identifying misleading representations of data and how, how people are using these in our world to trick us, okay? So diving right into this, graphs and statistics are often used to persuade. Advertisers and others may accidentally or intentionally present information in a misleading way. Now there are a lot of different ways that graphs can be misleading. So the first one is an axis can be broken or numbers are left off. In this case, we are looking at this part right here and showing, oh, well, they left off from 0 to 100, and they're only going up by tens the rest of the time. Well, unfortunately, this kind of misrepresents the data because it makes it look like 6th grade has twice as many ticket sales as 8th grade and almost three times as much as 7th grade. Okay, it really shows... Um, it tries to show that 6th grade has a ton more ticket sales when in reality they really don't have that many more, okay? Maybe 15 more than 8th grade and maybe 20, okay? A little bit less than 20 more than 7th grade. Really not that big of difference, okay? Now this could be used um, to show, okay, well, we really need to bump up how many 7th and 8th grade, okay? Maybe that was their, their goal to kind of guilt 7th and 8th grade into having more sales. Or maybe someone really likes the 6th grade and wants to show, oh, they are so much better than 7th and 8th. Who knows? But for whatever reason, this is, mis uh, this is trying to persuade an audience that 6th grade has had a ton more sales than 7th and 8th. Our next way to show, um, show difference is intervals on the axis are not the same length. And as you can see, we are going from 0 to 18,000 and it's this huge jump okay from 0 to 18,000 and then from 18 to 27,000 27,000 to 36 that's just an increase of 9,000 each but what they're saying is from this jump 0 to 18,000 we really have 0 to 9,000 okay and 9,000 to 18,000 okay so they are not showing the axis um, having the same length between intervals what this does is it kind of makes it seem like P Pizza Express is really doing better than it is. And Pizza Perfect really isn't that far ahead of them. When in reality, if Pizza Express is 18,000 and Pizza Perfect is 36, that's actually double. Okay, Pizza Perfect is doing double the amount of sales as Pizza Express, even though this graph, it looks like there's really not that much difference. This could be used by Pizza Express to show, okay, well, we're not doing that poorly. Look at, we're pretty close to our competition, okay? It's misleading. Our next way that graphs can be misleading is the scale is compressed, so it's hard to see the difference among the categories. And so what you can see is up here, we don't have any data. All of our data is within these two rows from 5 to 5.04. And if you notice the axis, this is revenue in millions, okay? So this is sales revenue from a certain company, and from 1995 to 2002, they're showing this. And what it looks like is this is a pretty steady company, but if we were to graph this and actually see all of that difference from 5 million to 5.04 million, we would see some pretty significant dips, like from 1997 to 1998 or from 2000 to 2001, those are pretty significant dips, like hundreds of thousands of dollars potentially, okay? So very misleading. This could be used by a company that really wants you to invest in their company, and they wanna show that their company is steady instead of showing all of these big, huge dips in their revenue. Pictorial graphs can distort data. And if we look at this, we see, okay, it looks like the same number of cars and trucks went through the toll booth activity, okay? All of them, same amount, cars and trucks are on the road going through the toll booth. When in reality we see, okay, let's count. We have one, two, three, four, five, six cars to four trucks. Really, if we had all these the same size, we would see that more cars go through the toll booth. Now, maybe this is used for, I don't know, an environment company. And they want to show that really we should just cut down on how many trucks are coming through because look, it's just as many as cars. We shouldn't have that many trucks on the road um, or who knows, okay? There's lots of different reasons that this could be done, but 
realize that even pictures can lie to you. And lastly, circle graphs, okay? Circle graphs, remember, have to show the entirety of the information. So in this case, it should show all of the different types of sandwiches. But this only shows some of the sandwiches a deli sales, sells. And if we look at these pieces of the pie, tuna's 48, turkey 52, roast beef 40, ham 84, it's like they're telling us the number of sandwiches that were sold total rather than the percentages. We should be seeing percentages when we're talking about circle graphs. So it's misleading because 48 sounds like, oh, that's a, that's a pretty good amount of tuna, when really it's probably maybe a fifth of what they sell in a day. Okay, so they should put percentages in here. Okay, make sure that the pieces of the pie are actually correct and show all of the sandwiches, even those that may not sell as well. Okay, and Let's look at this one. Um, why is this graph misleading? Okay, if you want to stop the video in each of these and think for yourself, that's a great idea. Okay, but it looks like some data has been compressed. We could maybe hone in on this information and see, okay, between 50 and $100, or sorry, 500 and $1,000, uh, what does it look like? Okay, what are these actually look like, looking like? Because it looks Okay, like it's going up a good amount, but it's actually rising pretty quickly from 2000 to 2005. We're also not seeing data outside of that range. So that's a pretty small range in the scheme of televisions. We should probably see some more dates as well. Okay. Think about how you could graph this differently so that it's no longer misleading. Next one. Why is this graph misleading? We have, first off, the axis. Okay, we have a broken axis here going from 10,000 to 15,000, making this graph look like it's having some huge jumps, huge jumps. To fix this, we should probably go from 0 to 15,000. Okay, if this graph is pretty misleading as is because it makes it look like going from 12,000 to um, 14,250, it's a huge jump. When in reality that's not that much of a difference okay they're making these jumps look a whole lot bigger than they really are why is this graph misleading well first off we don't have a ton of information on this y-axis maybe we should go up by 50s so that when we look at all of these even though they look like similar cooking times I'm gonna have to estimate a lot of these I should probably know more information so that I can tell, yeah, baked potatoes actually cook at a higher cooking temperature. Okay, that's just one of the reasons why this is misleading. Types of dogs is kind of like the sandwiches. Now, are these only four types of dogs? No, okay. And even at like a dog shelter or a, um, or a pet store, there's probably going to be more types of dogs than this if they wanted to show how many they had. But in addition, we need to see percentages here, okay? Definitely percentages to show how much we have of the total. And lastly, why is this graph misleading? Well, first we have a broken graph, which is not always the worst, but we can see, all right, we're only going from January to December. Maybe we need more information, maybe from a few different years, okay? A few different years to show a sales trend. It also, when we're looking at it like this, it makes it look like we have some huge jumps from January to February, okay? And then from February on, we're growing and growing and growing like crazy, when really we started out at about uh, 255, okay, in sales, all the way up to 320. That's not a huge difference, not a huge difference throughout the year, but they make it look like it's a bigger difference than they are. All this to say that graphs can be misleading. And in the world, advertisements, companies try to trick you with these graphs, okay? If you don't believe me, watch this YouTube video, okay? I have a YouTube video right here. I would encourage you to watch this if you haven't already. Because this shows you how we have this idea of what it looks like and advertisers might show it to us in a certain way to convince us of something. But in reality, when we look at the data closer, we realize, okay, this isn't actually what they are saying. 
there's not this big a jump or really there's not that much difference between car companies okay look at the data don't look at the pictures all the time look at the data and truly what it is saying so be careful when trying to when being convinced by advertisements don't just buy something because it looks good or maybe the reviews look pretty good because compared to another company it's better there's probably more to the data than that so do your research think about it well i hope this was helpful for your homework and for studying